Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome to our Bible class lesson today. Amen. It's our prayer and desire that, amen, since our last time of meeting, you have been blessed of the Lord. Amen. You're still trusting in God for your deliverances and for your expectations of him. For we are certain, amen, in him there is no failure. Amen. Our lesson on today will be dealing with the authority, amen, of the Bible, the authority of the Bible. Amen. If you're not careful many times when you read the word of God, amen, you just read it, amen, from the context of the writings on the pages and not view it, amen, as being authoritative. Amen. In other words, amen, when you read from the Bible, amen, the word of God, amen, means exactly what God is saying. Amen. The word of God would do, amen, exactly what God has stated that it will do. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible is the most authoritative book, amen, that we ever come across. Amen. Sometime in medical science, when the doctor cannot find an adequate answer for, amen, what he's searching, amen, for dealing with the patient, amen, he would go to the medical books. Sometime when the lawyer don't know the answer, amen, to the judicial, amen, question that's posed to him, amen, he'll go to his lawyer's manual, amen, to try to find the answer. And amen, all of these answers that have been put, even though they're, they're useful in their place, amen, these books will never be as authoritative amen, as the word of God is, amen. The word of God supersedes, amen, any writings of mankind, anything that man will ever write or has been written, amen, the word of God supersedes, amen, those writings, and those writings uh, all the time are not necessarily bad, amen, but those writings, amen, fall, amen, subject, amen, to the authority, amen, of the Bible. Scripture is regarded as the revelation of God's word to men and is considered inerrant. That is, is that it is perfect and without mistake. And it's also considered necessary, amen, essential for true knowledge about God. And it's also considered to be sufficient, which is complete and self-interpreting. In simple explanation, the scriptures are without the need of man's help, definition, or intervention. To some Christians and non-Christians, this view is unacceptable. Some actively oppose the inerrancy and sufficiency of scripture either by claiming that the Bible is merely a form of myth which provides only moral lessons or by using outside resources to interpret the Bible. Nonetheless, the scriptures re still remain the unchangeable word of God. In today's lesson, we'll examine some principles that project the clear and precise, amen, authority of the Bible, amen. The three principles that we'll look at, amen, in, in particular, Amen. That we consider to be modern, amen, day errors that are particularly dangerous when it comes to interpreting the scripture. The first one being interpreting the Bible in the context of culture. The second one is allowing scientific thought to control our understanding of the Bible. And the third we would be looking at would be interpreting the Bible as a myth. Now, these three, amen, concepts that we're going to examine here shortly. Amen. A modern day errors that man has made an error with. Amen. And they are particularly dangerous if you're going to use these means that we're going to discuss here. Amen. To interpret the scripture. And I would just say short and short before we go any further. Amen. To understand the, the word of God, there would be some things you can read and you can gain a concept from an intellectual uh, perspective. Amen. But to really understand, amen, the message of the Bible. Amen. A man must be filled with the spirit of God. The Bible tells us this, the word of God is spiritually discerned. Amen. In other words, there will be things, again, you will, you will grasp real quickly. There will be other things, amen, that you will need the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's power, it's influence. Amen. To deal with you, to help you to understand, amen, the message and the purpose, amen, of God's holy and written word. Now, many have been able on the intellectual side to grab Amen. The context of the words written, and yet they have misappropriated the use of those scriptures. Amen. Because they did not understand the intent of God's written word. And uh, it's not a strange thing to think that God's word has an intent. Amen. Basically, everything we do in life, there's an intent behind it. We go to work. Amen. We work 40 hours, 80 hours in some cases, some people a month. Amen. Before they receive a paycheck. But there's an intent. Amen. That at the end of those time periods, amen, they will receive their pay, their labor, amen, for the time that they have, amen, put forth. 
Amen. So it's not a strange thing to think, amen, that as we read the word of God, that it has an intent. Amen. So we don't want to just be able to read it. Amen. We want to be able to understand it. Amen. Be able to discern, amen, through the spiritual intervention. Amen. What is the meaning of the word of God? And this is where so many, so many, amen, have, amen, made mockery of the meaning of God's word by trying to make the word fit somewhere that it does not fit. Amen. And we want to deal with these three areas today that we just briefly mentioned. Amen. That we don't fall amen, in that class of making those same mistakes. I mean, the first one is interpreting the Bible in the context of culture. That's a mistake to do so. That's a grave error. Amen. That you make to try to interpret the Bible amen, in the context of culture. Now, I've traveled all over the world, amen, by way of military, I think. Uh, I've done three world cruises all over the world. And uh, I was just amazed at the different places uh, that we went, amen, how people look, how people ate, how people thought, how people lived, amen, how people talked, amen. But all of us, amen, shared one commonality, and that is we're human, amen. So, so you don't want the Bible, amen, to be broken down Amen. To just a cultural effect. Amen. Because somebody will be left out. Amen. So you don't want to start, amen, trying to understand the Bible, amen, based on your culture. Amen. Our cultures are different and our cultures will continue to be different. Amen. Even though they say the U.S. is a melting pot with many different cultures as they have come to the United States, amen, still, amen, strive to retain, amen, a portion of their culture. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But when it comes to interpreting the scriptures, you be very, very uh, uh, aware of the fact, amen, that you can fall in grave error if you're trying to interpret the scriptures, amen, by a cultural background. Amen. Let's look a little bit further, if you will. Major problems arise when the believer attempts to interpret the Bible in agreement and alignment of the modern cultural or present generation of the day. Now, uh, even in our cultural settings, amen, whatever they may be, Amen. In present day time, amen, things have changed. Now, because things have changed and will continue to change, amen, we cannot find ourselves in a position, if we're going to be correct, of trying to change the word of God to fit those cultures and to fit those present day generations. To do so would make the scriptures secondary to the authority of modern culture, as well as ignore the fact that God inspired the Bible. Amen. If you're trying to make Amen. The word of God. Amen. Today. Amen. Fit the modern cultural. Then you're, you're, you're making the word secondary. And now the, the culture of the day. Amen. It is most authoritative. And of course, amen, that would never be acceptable unto God. Amen. And then it's also, amen, to ignore the fact that God inspired the Bible. When we say God inspired the Bible, amen, when he gave us the word of God. He gave us everything we needed. Amen. To cover every generation, to cover every activity of mankind, the highs and the lows. Amen. The changes and things that are sustained. Amen. God gave us enough word. Amen. To cover all of those different aspects. Amen. So you, you, you don't want to get caught up in a position. Amen. Of attempting. Amen. To bring forth an interpretation of the scriptures. Amen. Based on where culture is today. Based on where the, uh, people's beliefs is today. I can remember some 30, 40 years ago, amen, homosexuality, amen, was openly frowned on, openly, openly, amen. Now, if you were to say that homosexuality is wrong and should not ever be practiced, amen, you fall, amen, subject to a whole lot of ridicule, amen, and they call you homophobia and things of that nature, amen, because, amen, the cultures have changed. And even though the cultures have changed, God has not changed. And even though the cultures have changed, his word has not changed. Forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. So if we're going to uh, just review that subject matter, amen, according to the scriptures, amen, whatever the scriptures said in the beginning about homosexuality, amen, today, 2021, amen, the scripture still says the exact same thing. Now, the only difference is in the cultural setting today, amen, uh, it's more open, it's more acceptable. When I say more acceptable, more people, amen, are inclined to give their opinion and acceptance to this lifestyle, amen. We understand that, amen, is something that God frowns on. 
Amen. Let's look a little bit further, if you will. The Bible is God's word that meets the needs of all generations in every culture. Amen. The Bible is God's word that meets the needs of all generations in every culture. So even in our culture, in our generations, as they're making their switches and they're making their changes, amen, the word of God, amen, as it was given to us, inspired of God, amen, the contents of that word still meets, amen, the challenges and the needs of every generation and every culture. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 16, if you will. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Amen. So here in Philippians, the Bible is telling us, amen, even though it may be some 2,000 years later, amen, from, amen, what we come to begin to know of Jesus Christ, amen, and the word of God, amen, here we are now, that same word tell us, let us walk by the same room that we walked by, walked by back then, amen, now today, let us walk by that same room and let us mind the same thing. I thank God that the word of God do not keep changing, amen, because if the word of God kept changing and we were not abreast of the changes, amen, then we can lose our soul, amen, simply by not keeping up with the changes. But the word of God has no changes to it. The word of God has no error to it, amen. I heard, amen, uh, um, a man on a video I was looking at this past week, and he made the, uh, uh, the comment, amen, that as a prophet, Amen. God was giving him word that was not in the Bible. And he was confronted by one of the other preachers, thank God. Amen. It was on the telecast that, amen, uh, uh, really came against him very strongly. Amen. That there's no more word to be given. <laughs> amen. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. So for him to get more word, he have to send to heaven. Amen. And then he have to deal with the word left that say forever is settled. Amen. And they have to try to come back here and give us something and give the ones that have died, amen, what they need. I, I want you to see, amen, um, uh, uh, many times, amen, uh, uh, the era of understanding the scripture, amen, falls, amen, from one generation to the next. Because that particular current generation is trying to make the word fit them. Amen. When I had the uh, blessed privilege of traveling all over the world, amen and circling the world at least uh, three times on world cruises when I was in the military, amen, I, I, saw, I saw many, many different cultures, many different cultures, many different dress styles, uh, I heard many, many different languages, uh, saw the likes and dislikes of many, many different people up on the cultural backgrounds. But the fact remained the same that as a human being, amen, all of us were still the same. Amen, matter of fact, the, the saying is said that you can take an American baby, amen, that's born with the uh, projection that it will speak English, amen, from English speaking parents, and you give it to a Chinese, amen, family, amen, that Chinese family, amen, will raise that baby and it will speak the Chinese language. And an another great saying is saying, uh, 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 you can put uh, uh, any nationality in a room, amen, close the door, and they cry. You could not tell what nationality they are by their crying. Because hurt affects all of us the same. So, so, so our culture is what separates us. Our culture is what identifies us. But the facts still remain the same. All of us are human. Amen. So all of us fall up under the same confinement. Amen. And the same authority and the same faith. Amen. Is applied. Amen. To what the word of God. Amen. Means and what God, amen, has left on the record again. Nevertheless, Philippians 3 and 16, nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Amen, another uh, mistake you don't want to make is, is allowing scientific thought to control our understanding of the Bible. Amen, you, you don't want, amen, science to, amen, be the projective that determines why you believe what you believe. Amen. There, there are some things, amen, in the natural sense of life, amen, in your present day life today, you cannot explain. And basically everybody believes they have a brain. Basically everybody believes they have a heart and lungs and different organs of the body because that's basically what we have been taught. And no reason not to believe that is so, but we have never seen them. 
I mean, the average person has never seen a lung. The average person has never seen a brain or, or a heart. But yet, every individual basically, with some sense of, of knowledge, believes, amen, that these organs, amen, actually, amen, are part, amen, of a human body, amen. But when it comes to, amen, it seems like the spiritual things of God and, and, and the scientific part that deals with that, if we cannot explain it in a scientific method, Amen. Then some will come to disbelieve. Amen. They would disbelieve. Amen. The facts of the Bible. We'll look a little bit close at that in just a little bit. But don't you make that mistake or the error. Amen. By allowing scientific thought to control uh, your understanding of the Bible. It would appear that the scientific community will support the fact that the world was created by God and God alone. Amen. When, you, when the scientific community. Amen. Gets the view. Amen. The core from a scientific view of how the world was made and to handle those artifacts, amen, of the world, it seemed like, amen, the scientific community, amen, will have more faith, amen, to believe, amen, that the earth, the world was created by God. But many of them, amen, from their sense of knowledge that they've gained, amen, have used it, amen, to try to nullify, amen, or disprove Amen. That the earth, amen, was made by God. Yet it is the scientific community that offers the greatest challenge to God being the creator of the world. Amen. It's the scientific community that creates the greatest challenge, amen, to God being the creator of the world when they should be some of the most believing, amen, individuals. Our faith must rest on the explanation, amen, given to us by the scriptures, which state that the heavens and the earth and all that dwelled therein was created by God alone. Amen. That's where our faith must rest. Amen. A um, um, uh, great majority of the earth realm would never be scientific in any measure. Amen. I have any great understanding, amen, of the scientific, amen, dwellings and aspects thereof. Amen. So when it comes to, amen, our explanation, amen, that's given to us of scripture about the formation of the world, Amen. We simply have to rely on our faith. We rely on our faith based on what the word of God states. Amen. One, one great thing about the Bible. Amen. Uh, many will argue about the Bible uh, and many will say that stuff is not true. Uh, many will even go as far as to challenge the believer. Amen. To prove that it is true. And I've seen many Christians become displaced in their faith when that challenge is given to them to prove that it's true. But you don't, you don't have to become this place, amen, when a, a non-believer, amen, challenge you to prove that the Bible is true. Uh, you in return look to them and tell them, prove that it's not true, <laughs> amen. And I promise you that individual, amen, as long as they may live, however long life they may have that God give to them, amen, of all of that life cycle will never be able to prove that the Bible, the word of God is not true. Amen. So I don't want us to feel, amen, amen, challenged by, amen, scientific evidence. Amen. When it comes to whether we're going to believe the word of God, we believe things in the earth realm that we'll never be able to prove. Amen. matter of fact, whatever your name that was given to you at birth, uh, you believe that's your name. Amen. You believe it because in most cases, I mean, there was a piece of paper called a birth certificate, and there it was written. Uh, uh, we can't prove that that is not a false birth certificate. I'm not saying that that's the case, but you cannot prove that that is the original. But you believe that is your name. Amen. You believe that is who you are. Amen. Because by faith, as you grew up in life, you were called that and you were told that. Amen. You believe that that is the case. Amen. So it is. Amen. When it comes, amen, to dealing with scientific matter, amen, especially about the creation, amen, of the world, amen. Uh, the Bible simply tell us, amen, God spoke things into existence. God said, let there be and there was, amen. So, so many will say, well, that's virtually impossible. Yeah, with men, some things are impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. So let's look at Genesis, amen, chapter 1, and verse number uh, one in verse number two. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse two. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And as you read on, you'll find, amen, that God created the things, amen, in the earth realm, amen, simply by, amen, the command of the word, amen, let there be. And the scripture tell us, amen, and there was, amen. So do not fall into the snare and the trap amen, of thinking that you need scientific evidence, amen, to confirm your faith and belief, amen, in what the word of God is telling us, amen. The third mistake that you can make when it comes down to interpreting the scriptures, amen, is interpreting the Bible as a myth, amen. You, you don't, you don't want to ever, amen, look at the word of God and say, that's not true, amen. That's just a good old story, amen, to help us along, amen, to chart our paths in life, Amen. Uh, the Bible, amen, comes nowhere near, amen, being a myth. Let's look and see, can we get a definition of the word myth first? A myth is defined as an invented story, idea, or concept. Concept. Amen. Again, a myth is defined as an invented story, idea, or concept. Something that somebody invented, something that came up, amen, with the imagination of somebody's mind is what a myth is. Amen. It's defined as uh, the word of God is not, amen, the concept of a man's thoughts. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, that, that God literally, amen, dealt with mankind, amen, that he may, amen, pen and leave on record, amen, the word of God. But these words, amen, was not the thoughts in the mind of man himself. Amen. So don't ever get into the snare and the trap. Amen. Of seeing the word of God as just being a myth, a, a story that's told. And many people will read the Bible, amen, concerning the different stories that the word of God give us, amen, to help us understand, amen, what the word is saying to us. And they would just call it an old story from the Bible. Amen. It, it's, it's, no, it's not an old story from the Bible. It is the word of God that has a meaning, has a purpose, and has a destination to the reader. Again, a myth is defined as an invented story, idea, or concept. Myths are often to reinterpretation in the light. Myths are open, rather, to reinterpretation. Remember this, myths, we talk about a myth. It is open to the reinterpretation in light of the changes in cultural or scientific belief. Amen, when you got a myth, you got the uh, thought of somebody's mind. Now, that thought is open to reinterpretation. So if the Bible is just a myth, then what it said today, a hundred years later, a thousand years later, amen, it would be open to somebody's reinterpretation. And we just read, amen, that God wants us to what? Walk by the same room, mind the same thing. If we're to do that, the word of God cannot change. Amen. So, so myths are open to reinterpretation in the light of changes in cultural scientific belief. True believers must never view the Bible as the imagination of someone's own personal thoughts. Amen. We ever view the Bible, amen, in that way, that this is just someone's, amen, own personal thoughts. The Bible is the inspired word of God. The danger of believing the, the danger of believing the Bible as a myth is the act of choosing which parts the believer is going to believe. Amen. So if you start believing the Bible, that is just a myth, then you run into danger now of choosing, amen, which part, amen, you're going to believe. Now, for us to be saved, amen, we got to be enjoined to the whole of God's word. You cannot go through the Bible cherry picking. Cherry picking is picking the part that you lack. Amen. Uh, uh, the, the Bible, amen, gives reference, amen, in Jeremiah, amen, eat the whole roll. And Jeremiah said, amen, and when he began to eat the whole roll, amen, attained to the whole of God's word, it was bitter. But as it got him, it did his work. The word of God doesn't work, amen, on mankind. Amen. It became the rejoicing of his soul. Amen. But even that which we deem to be bitter, amen, we still have to be willing to receive it, amen, as the word of God. Amen. So don't, don't fall into that danger of seeing the Bible as a myth, amen, because now you're going to start cherry picking. You're going to start saying, I believe this and I don't believe that. And this is one great fact I want you to remember about the word of God. Amen. The word of God, amen, has its own ability. To, to interpret itself. Amen. The Bible tells us the scriptures of no private interpretation. So there will be, always be, amen, I don't care what subject matter you're dealing with, there will always be another scripture at the least that will help 
identify the interpretation, amen, of what you're trying to understand. Amen. So the Bible is self-interpreting. Amen. The Bible will never contradict itself. Amen. If you have an understanding of this scripture, whatever that scripture may be, and then another scripture on the same subject matter, amen, it is now contradicting that scripture. Amen. Neither scripture is wrong. More than likely what has happened is I have a wrong interpretation or I'm misunderstanding the intent of that scripture. Amen. So, so don't ever think that, amen, what the scripture is saying, that it just stands alone. Amen. I love to use this term when it comes to the Bible. Amen. The, 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 the Bible is a book that's woven together. When you start breaking up certain scriptures and isolating certain scriptures, amen, you have broken the wovenness of God, God's word. Amen. So the word of God must remain as a unit, as one. In the beginning was the word, not words. In the beginning was the word. Even though the Bible is contained of words, amen, it is the whole of the word. Amen. So don't ever get caught up in the trap, amen, of finding yourself, amen, interpreting the scriptures, amen, as a myth. Let's look at 2 Peter 1 and 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Even in the Old Testament, amen, the word of God, amen, did not come by the will of man. In other words, it wasn't an old myth, an old story that man, amen, conjured up in his mind and just decided that he was going to put that, amen, into writing, amen, to be a governance and a guide to mankind. That's not how the Bible came about. The Bible said holy men, not just any man, amen, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. In other words, the Spirit of God, amen, moved upon these men, amen, took control of them and all their infallibilities, amen, and all of their error that they may contain of themselves. Amen. The Spirit of God took control of them, and these men spake as they were moved, amen, by the Holy Ghost. So the Spirit of God, amen, is the author of the Word of God, not man. Amen. Even though we can identify men that God used to pen, to write, to speak. Amen. These words are not under the ownership of those men. Amen. These words, amen, came from God. Amen. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. The word was what? With God. Amen. Let's look at another point as we, amen, continue on in this lesson, authority, amen, of the Bible. The Old and New Testaments are to be accepted as authoritative. Now, many times the Christian will find themselves Amen. Trying to do away with the Old Testament. Amen. Some will say, you know, the reading of the Old Testament is kind of hard to understand. And some will say some things they practiced back then. I don't understand, you know, those practices. And some, and some, and some things they did practice, we don't practice today. Amen. Uh, remember that the uh, uh, Word of God, amen, was given to us regardless of the time zone. Amen. To meet the needs of mankind in every aspect of his life. Amen. Even down to the saving, amen, of man's soul. So the Old Testament, amen, is not to be done away with. Amen. Uh, the New Testament, amen, is in conjunction, amen, with, amen, the Old Testament. If you really want an understanding, amen, of the New Testament writings, amen, get a clear understanding. Uh, I will use this, this term of the journey, amen, of the Old Testament, amen. The Old Testament led us on a journey, amen, to the coming of the New Testament. Now, when you can embrace that journey and understand that journey, amen, which in com the coming of Jesus Christ, amen, now as he has come in the New Testament writing, you can accept him as being the Messiah, being the Savior, because he is mentioned of all the way back in the Old Testament writing. And, and, and many people reject Christ because, amen, they do not see him to be the Christ of the Old Testament. Amen. He is there. He, he is literally there. Amen. And, and the Old Testament gives us that journey by which he was presented to us, amen, in the New Testament writing. There are some that will accept the writings of the New Testament, but yet deny the necessity of the Old Testament. We need the Old Testament. To do so is to lose the complete story of redemption offered to mankind through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you can understand, amen, this story of redemption, amen, that started in the Old Testament, 
Amen. Now here in the New Testament, you can appreciate better and accept, amen, the coming of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy 3 and 16 states, all scripture, that's old and new, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, even the Old Testament. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. So don't throw away something that you need. Amen. Uh, uh, many times, amen, uh, because like I said, it seems somewhat in some cases, amen, to be difficult for, especially, amen, new saints in the Lord to grasp the language, amen, and some of the cultural practices of the Old Testament, they would think today that they don't need that. A amen. But I, I love, I, I literally love as a preacher Amen. Even in uh, self needs, as I, I may use that term, of trying to get an answer for what I'm faced with, going to the Old Testament. A amen. If you can see the revelation, amen, of your deliverance from the Old Testament, amen, then you can see Jesus in the Old Testament as well. A amen. So I want, you to, I want you to really grasp the fact, amen, that the Old Testament and New Testaments, amen, they are to be accepted as being authoritative. Amen. What you read in the Old Testament is authoritative. What you read in the New Testament is still authoritative. So you don't want to get into the play of saying, I don't need, amen, anything from the Old Testament. The third point we're going to look at, amen, is the authority of the Bible supersedes the laws of nature. Amen. The authority of the Bible, amen, supersedes, amen, the laws of nature. Amen. The laws of nature are put in place by God to help us understand the operations of humanity in the earth realm. So, so you don't want to throw away, amen, the laws of nature because they will help us understand certain things, amen, about humanity and about the earth realm. A a amen. Uh, but, but yet at the same time, amen, don't ever put the laws of nature, amen, above the authority of the Bible. Amen. Now here, here we go again with explanation. If I can't explain it, then I don't believe it. Amen. But when we look at the laws of nature, amen, they are put in place to govern and to guide us in this world cycle and even be a guidance to the life of mankind. Uh, therefore, these laws are subject to the command and intervention of God's divine will and miraculous acts. Amen. The laws of nature are subject to the command and the intervention of God's divine will and miraculous acts. So when you talk about the laws of nature, do not, amen, forget or do not, amen, fail to understand that the laws of nature, amen, are subject to the command and intervention of God's divine will and miraculous act. We say, amen, God's, amen, a divine will. God has a purpose and a destination for whatever he is to do. And then God works in miraculous ways. Now, the laws of nature are put on course as a guidance. Amen. What goes up must come down. Amen. Uh, but God can create a miraculous act and keep it there. Amen. As long as he will keep it there. Amen. This is why gravity comes into place. Amen. Uh, uh, many will try to explain gravity. Amen. Uh, uh, but yet at the same time, uh, the one that can explain gravity and has the control of gravity is God himself because God created gravity. Amen. So, so when we talk about the, the laws of nature, Amen. And we're going to look at one here, an example, by way of example, amen, and in particular, amen, that will help us understand even the laws of nature, amen, are subject, amen, to the authority, amen, of the Bible, God's written word. Uh, an example we'll look at, amen, is the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ, an example of the laws of nature being subject to the will of God. Now, now the birth of a child means that there must be a mother and means that there must be a father. There must be a man and there must be a woman. I mean, the normal order of conception is that the seed of man is needed, amen, in order, amen, for a birth to be even considered. We talk about the human birth, amen. If there's no seed of man, amen, there's no human birth. But what you see upon a miraculous act of God Amen. In the birth of Jesus Christ, he bypassed the seed of man. And if you understand better, 
Amen. That reason, you understand, he bypassed the sin of man because, amen, the seed of man, because the seed of man, amen, his, his seed has a sin nature in it. Amen. Everybody born from, a, from, from the seed of a man, born, he'd be born here a sinner. But under the laws of nature, here when you talk about the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus literally bypassed the law of nature. Amen. And he himself, amen, became, amen, the heavenly father. Amen. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. Without the use. Amen. Of a human man. Amen. Here on earth. Amen. So the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ is an example of the laws of nature being subject. Amen. To the will of God. Amen. God can command. Amen. The laws of nature. Amen. We talk about the laws of nature. You might think about storms as well. Amen. Whenever he was out on the sea and the storm came, he said, peace be still. Amen. And the storms calm down. I mean, the laws of nature, amen, something had gone array in nature, troubled the ocean, amen, and now, amen, here come God, define the laws of nature, amen, speaking to the law of nature and say, peace be still. And of course, the storm, amen, was quieting, amen. So I want you to see at the same time, amen, he goes a little bit further in this example, amen, that now when it comes to miraculous birth, it's miraculous because, amen, the seed of man was not used. And there was a purpose, as I stated earlier, amen, why the seed of man was not used. So the authority of the Bible, amen, supersedes, amen, the laws of nature. And let me just say this uh, just a little bit more on a personal level. Amen, you may be dealing with something that the laws of nature have spoken and the laws of nature are true in what it says spoken. But those laws of nature, uh, just, just talk about dealing with your health, amen, can be broken Amen. By the authority of God's uh, word, by his stripes, we are healed. A a a amen. Uh, because of the sin nature. Amen. Uh, we, we inhabit diseases that sometimes, amen, can literally take us out of here you know, based on what the disease is. But here comes God by his written word, has the power and the authority. Amen. To see the law of nature and just speak the word and say, be ye healed. Amen. Child of God. And of course, you experience your healing. Amen. So don't ever think that because something is happening in your life under the stretch, amen, of the laws of nature, amen, that there's no hope. Amen. The laws of nature are subject, amen, to the authority of God's written word. Let's look at an example here that helps a little bit better in Scripture. Isaiah chapter number seven and verse number 14 states, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, now he says something, amen, uh, that anybody knew anything about childbirth would be very, very problematic. Amen. He says a, a, a virgin shall conceive. It's impossible from the, uh, when you look at, amen, uh, 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 the laws of nature, it's impossible for a virgin to conceive. A, a, amen. A woman that is a virgin Amen. Do not have the ability, amen, to conceive a child, amen, because there's no seed there. Amen. But what God says here, amen, to help us understand that the laws of nature is subject, amen, to the thought of the Bible, to his word. Amen. He, he said, I'm going to give you a sign. Amen. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, we all know that story. Amen. The miraculous birth of Jesus Christ. And it, and it happened exactly, amen, as God stated, amen, here through Isaiah that it would happen. Amen. So don't feel like you're boxed in, amen, because the laws of nature have spoken. Amen. The laws of nature are set on course by God. But the laws of nature are subject to God. Amen. Anything that was made or commanded by God to be, amen, is subject to the authority, amen, of God himself. In conclusion. The Bible is the most important authority book of all times. Its contents and purpose will never become outdated or ineffective. Let us not fall into the trap of viewing it as just another book. It is the only book without error and is never in need of being updated. Its contents cover the whole of man's life, his purpose and his destination. How we regard the Bible will have a profound impact on our eternal souls. To believe it and practice its contents is to save oneself. 
to reject and disobey its contents is to damn one's souls to eternal damnation. What choice will you make? I pray, amen, you will make the choice, amen, that you accept the Bible, amen, as the only and final authority of God. Whatever the, the Bible states, whatever it says, amen, it has not changed, it will not change. Even though man is changing every day, Amen. And even in some context, amen, of what we may call church and spiritual gathering, men are beginning to change. That does not matter, amen, in the context of what the word is. The word still remains the same. So I pray today, amen, you have heard something particular, amen, that will help you to have a, amen, a deeper faith in what the word of God has stated, just as it's written, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what you're hearing. And even sometimes, no matter what you're feeling, amen, always rest upon the fact, amen, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So I pray God's blessings upon you. Pray God keep you safe and sound, amen, still through this time of turbulence of dealing with COVID-19, amen. You remain, amen, faithful, amen, to the things they ask us to do to be, amen, safe, amen, that we can, amen, make it through this turbulent time and that God can bless us, amen, to come back together in our sentence, amen, as we have done a four time, amen, to be in fellowship one with another. So till God bless us to come together again, amen, you hold on to God's unchanging hand. Be blessed till we meet again.